What's going on everyone? This is Bunny Muffins. A lot of people wonder what to do when you get built different. So today we are going to go over three different games. One is in Diamond, one is in Masters, and one is the game getting into Masters. So if you ever wanted to climb from Diamond to Masters, and sometimes you run into those situations where you don't really know what to do with a certain augment, we're going to be doing a Masterclass on Built Different right now. And I know a lot of people don't like this augment. You either love it or you hate it. I'm personally actually in like a middle ground. It's mainly built for top fouring. It's not really something that you use to win a lot of games, but it's probably one of the freest top fours you can get. And we're gonna show you guys why and also how to play it. So in case you guys are new to this channel, we do a lot of these hour compilation, two hour, sometimes even three hour compilations of how to climb with doing a certain strategy. So sometimes it could be playing flex. Sometimes we could focus on different comps. And I'm going to try to do augments because I haven't done that quite yet. So we get a prismatic built different. So in terms of which ones to take, I think the gold one is actually the best because a lot of prismatic ones, they are just slightly stronger than built different. Like it's hard to, I wouldn't say it's like bad to play prismatic built different. Like I obviously love it a lot still, but if I were to rank the three built different augments, the one, two, and three, I'd probably go two, three, then one. So gold, prismatic, then silver. The reason why is because the other gold augments I think are just slightly weaker relative to gold build different. Uh, but obviously I'd say the for sure takes is the prismatic and the gold one. Like unless you get something ridiculously even more insane than prismatic build diff, like you're probably taking that. Uh, but the silver one, I think that one's the hardest to play and the least rewarding. And here is why. There's just like, it doesn't give that much power to your team. Again, this is a top four in comp, so you don't spike that hard in the late game. So you don't scale, you get like a very high floor of power level and then it just falls off later on. So unless you get something crazy like a three star graves or like a three star Nyla or Pantheon, you're not gonna be winning too many games because other people will eventually outscale you. But like that doesn't mean you can't get second place. That doesn't mean you can't get third either, but like it's generally averages around fourth place. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So we are going to play different units that don't share the same synergy. In case you guys are new, built different means you cannot have any traits active. Well, actually you can have traits active. It, it's a free country after all, right? But you just don't get any bonuses if you do so. A lot of times people are saying like, oh, you can't do this or you shouldn't do that. And even though that is the case for a lot of things, like I actually think it's kind of wrong because like you have the freedom to do whatever you want. It's like you go to a doctor's office and you have like a certain pain that you want to fix and then they tell you how to fix it and then you don't do it. It's like you're free not to do it. You just will have to suffer with the problem still, right? Uh, so with Built Different, like you can play synergies, but it's obviously best not to because you don't get the health and attack speed bonus. So you want to focus instead on items. Items are very important for built different compositions. The reason why is because you can easily run multiple carries. So one little trick is that you could actually run two copies of the same unit and get the same exact benefit. So you can't say that for any other comp in the game except for double trouble builds. And it just allows you to two star your carries a lot easier and utilize them more. So Oftentimes, if we are playing a Zaya guild comp, for example, we'll have a Zaya one on the board and a Zaya one on our bench while we're rolling for the third one, right? To get a two star Zaya. In those cases, you can only use that one star Zaya and that's it. But with built different, you can actually use both of them at the same time and really take advantage of that power spike by hitting those units. So we talked about this a bit before the main carries of the built different composition. It's going to be graves and then it's going to be followed by Pantheon or Nyla. I'd say they're about tied. It's whoever you two star first. Luckily for you guys, they all use pretty much the same items. They like a healing item and they like attack damage. So it's actually really easy to build this comp. You could just focus around who you two star first. In the early game, you do have to identify some item holders and a lot of people hate Volibear in Dragonmancer comps because his numbers are just a little low right now. Hopefully this changes in future patches, but with Built Different, you can actually make use of him. And since no one else is playing Volibear because he's such a trash unit, uh, you could also do like Volibear item as either as an item holder. And I have seen some reroll Volibear built diffs. It's very rare, but it does happen. It is an option you could keep on the table. 
Um, another thing you want to realize when you play Build Different is you want to try to win streak because this is definitely a win streak augment. It's not like the strongest win streak augment in the game, but it's definitely in the upper percentiles, uh, which is really important. So if you do not win streak during stage two, you are pretty much screwed for the rest of the game. So don't be afraid to level up a little more aggressively than you normally would. So here we luck out a bit. We get a Yasuo too. Don't ask me why I built Warmogs on Yasuo. I should have just put it on the Zac or the Volibear. Uh, even like, yeah, it, it just really doesn't do too much. Luckily, we two start the Yone, so it's not like the worst thing in the world. But I did want to slam it on some random unit. Keep in mind, like, Yone's not going to be in my final comp, so I don't mind wasting items on him because I'm going to sell him later on and then swap it out onto whoever I want later. Uh, the user for Warmogs would probably be Hecarim. He'd probably be the best one to hold that. So we get a huge luck out here. We hit Bull Bear too. That's, there are very few things in life that get better than that, you know? So when you play Built Different, in my meta snapshot on bunnymuffins.lol slash meta, I always have a note that says you always need to identify who your different carries and tanks are throughout the match. And this is going to change with every single Built Different game. There's no like set standard. And the reason why is because you need to play around who you two star first. So this game we two starred Volibear and Yasuo. They're kind of similar units. They both like attack speed but they don't like attack damage or ability power as much as other people. So if I've had like a, a Rengar 2 star, for example, obviously he likes attack speed and attack damage. So itemizing him is pretty easy. But for Volibear and Yone, they kind of just both like Rage Blade and like damage amplification such as Giant Slayer, or maybe even like a QSS to keep them up a bit longer, you know? Uh, or some healing such as a Hand of Justice or Bloodthirster. So... If I had, let's say, a Rengar 2-star, I would definitely slam the Runon's Hurricane that's on my bench right now and just have a Hand of Justice and Runon's Hurricane Rengar. But since it's a Volibear, I can't really do that quite yet. It could be argued that I should build it anyways because I'm going to get Graves later on, but Volibear 2 can honestly stabilize you for a very long time. I didn't really like the augments I saw before, so I'm just going to reroll. Probably pick up Exiles or Preparation. They're both really good here. Uh, Exiles, you get a ton of value because you have so much health on all your units. And the other one, which was Preparation, is really good because you can take your time pivoting into your other comp to build up full stacks for whoever you're going to carry later on. But since I also had the Warmogs, it's just a lot of Exile value, so I just felt that that was the best one at that point in time. But let me know down in the comments below which augment you would have taken there, and also leave a timestamp whenever you ask a question in these types of videos because it's like uh, it's hard to scrub through like an hour of time to find out exactly where you're referring to. So it just helps a lot um, for that type of stuff. So this person, he has, I believe that's the Triforce Augment plus Portable Forge. I really like that Augment a lot too. It's really good for rerolling. Mm. I see another Volibear here. So maybe I should have considered a Volibear reroll game. I did not do it in this game. Spoiler alert, I'm sorry. But it definitely is something to consider. I may have even been able to reroll both Yone and and Volibear. That would have been fun to do. Uh, but we get this Zeri here. Right now, I'm lacking tanks. So I need, like, maybe more tanks. Maybe two copies of Jax or maybe a Braum would be good. Uh, I could run a Rakan as well. I don't believe I have any Rage Wings. Oh, yeah. The reason why you don't run Zaya in a built different composition, I'm not saying it's bad to do. There are some cases where you could go for that. But a lot of the good tanks are Rage Wings as well. You think about Hecarim, he CCs half the board. Rakan, he dashes through the enemy team CCing people on the way there. It's just two very good tank units that you just can't use if you go for Zaya. So it's nothing against her, but they're just better options. That's why Graves, Nyla, and Pantheon are better. Uh, we're probably going to pick up a bow here. There are two of them there, so we're in no rush. We get the Zeri. We do have a Zeri pair already, so we could potentially use her to item hold for us. Uh, there's the Zac too. Just another thing to remember, the reason why this comp caps out really easily is because a lot of the legendary units just can't be used for a built different comp because they give themselves a trait, such as Bard and Soraka, and all the dragons do as well. Also, I'm going to level up here. The reason why is because there's another guy at 100 health, and I want to face him because I'm stronger than him right now. And I want to end his streak and keep mine up because, again, we're playing for win streaking because we're playing for top fours. And having a lot of life is just like a really easy way to top four. That's pretty much like the basis of this team composition. But yeah, 
We're able to knock this guy out here. Zyra did so much work on that back line, providing so much CC. Volibear had nice AoE follow-up as well. So we're actually kind of chilling here. Arguable to sell the Zeri to make 20 gold, but I decided not to. Uh, that one's tough to say. I I'm not sure which one is the right play there. Uh, we do have this realm. I probably should play this over the Zeri because I think I just need more tank units right now. You may notice I'm scouting a lot here and that's because um, streaking is just so important because again, that's like the whole point of this composition. So I I'm trying to position for whoever I potentially face. It's a little tricky though because I have exile so you can't get like perfect, uh, perfect, what do you call it? It's really unfortunate here. This guy has Radiant, Relic, and Portable Forge, so he's really strong. I probably should have slammed an item here. Maybe like the Runons. I don't know if it would have helped because his Lux is just keeping everyone alive. The problem with Volibear is that he doesn't kill people. He leaves people at very low life totals. So maybe the Runons would have finished off all three of those units there and potentially may have allowed me to attack his Lux. But instead I take a loss here, so I'm in a really bad spot now that I lost my win streak. I'm not saying you always have to 10 streak. Obviously, like, if I had to choose in a perfect world, would I want to 10 streak or not 10 streak? I'd obviously want to 10 streak. But if I do 10 streak, you could potentially get, like, second place, if not first. But if not, just go for the top fours. It's perfectly fine as well. So let's see what items we get here. We get a belt and two swords. Wow, that is crazy. Another Jax is more than welcome. We have another Rel, so Bloodthirster for sure. And then it's probably a Giant Slayer. And then we could save this other bow for maybe Titan's Resolve for Pantheon, Nyla, or Graves. Or just another attack speed item, maybe a Last Whisper for Graves. We're in a really good spot right now, so we'd have to get really unlucky in order to not place top four here. And let's say you did manage to not win streak this whole time. The only difference you'd have is you'd have less gold at this point. Uh, which isn't ideal by any means, but it's not like the end of the world if you didn't purely like nine streak, like how we did here. You want to at least five streak though, but it doesn't happen every game. I do have an example of that happening later on, so I'm not just going to show you the games where ridiculous stuff happens. So next game is probably the most ridiculous game I have seen in a while and probably one of the easiest ones, but the third game is definitely one where I did not get like super lucky you know uh okay we have think fast air binary airdrop and scope weapon so binary is incredibly good for build different comps because you can run so many different carries remember how i said before you wanted a lot of items well binary airdrop is just like the quintessential item for for that type of thing uh, i don't know how scope weapons prismatic actually works for graves but it'd probably be pretty funny uh, unfortunately, we don't have the best items here. We can't really slam that many good things. I'm going to throw the Shiv onto Volibear, maybe. Uh, Volibear or Yone. I probably should have put it on, on Volibear. I don't know why I put it on, on Yone. Uh, but, you know, it's not, like, the worst thing in the world. We got a bunch of AP items. You could put it on, like, Seraphine or something, but maybe I should have saved them for something else. Because uh, the belt could be used for Pantheon. Maybe I could go full tank Pantheon with, like, Warmog's Redemption, perhaps? Um, but I guess we're at, we have exile, so it's not as important to have redemption. And this is really like a missed potential of a reroll Volibear game. We've seen so many of him. All right, so we get a Braum here. Braum's a pretty decent tank. He's better than Zac as a guardian. So when you play build diff, you have to identify the best unit of every trait that you want to use. So I like to think of the classes more. So if you want a cannoneer, it's going to be Graves. If you want a swift shot, it's going to be Zaya. If you want a... Assassin, it's going to be Nyla, but for the tanks, it's like Hecarim, and then for Guardians, like, it's a little tough. Brahm's unironically the best one, even though he's a two-cost unit, and that's because you'd rather have Hecarim as a four-cost, so you can't use Rakan as a Rage Wing, and then, what's the other one? Uh, Idis is a dragon, so you can't really use Idis. And then for Bruisers, Jax is a good one, because he CCs in an area around him, so you can't really... Can't really complain about that, you know? Uh, yeah, the other bruisers are Siphon, Olaf. Those are both damage dealers. If you don't itemize them, they're not that great. And they're mainly good because of their traits. So it's a little bit different, I would say. Uh, we want a sword here. Maybe the Nyla could do as well. If not, maybe a bow or a crit. Uh, 
Yeah, I think I want the the sword here. So we get that. That's really good. We could use that for either Nyla or Pantheon. We get a Jax too. Really good that we're hitting a lot of natural upgrades. Uh, so I'd say on this game so far, since we haven't rolled that much, as long as we don't get completely unlucky on hitting Graves 2 later on, probably like a third or second is in is in our thoughts right now. Potentially a, a first if we get lucky, but I'm saying if we get like regular luck, it should probably be like a second or third. Okay, Archangels on the Graves, not ideal. <laughs> That's the one odd thing about binary airdrops. Sometimes you get complete garbage, but you know what? It's a free item, so a lot of people complain about getting free stuff in life. So I I know some people, they, um, they're like mom cooks for them or whatever, and they complain about <laughs> the, the food. And my Zyra here, I'm going to complain about her because she whiffed her ultimate, and that costed me HP, which I desperately needed for a new win streak. Unlucky stuff happens, you know. This new shop that we have, nothing really enticing to go for. It's all two-cost units. We're just going to ignore that one for now. Okay, so this... Some player. He's got the blue buff and a radiant death cap. Holy cow. He's really strong. We end up losing this one. That's okay. We end up taking a bunch of damage there. So new shop. We can't take that one. We can't take this one because we had exiles. We don't want guild either. This one is a Zeke's. We could reforge it. So I think I skip over this one, but in hindsight, it might have been okay to take. We could do like a rapid fire cannon plus... Hand of Justice on Nyla. Yeah, this one's takeable as well. Depends on how greedy you are. We do have a lot of gold, but at the same time, like, I don't want to waste too much on getting, like, super turbo perfect items. Another thing I was looking for was I wanted to make sure I got a Chaos Dragon thing with a lot of items because we have Binary Airdrop. So we got Rel. We have Nyla now. Uh, but we do need the two stars, so we're going to keep rolling a little bit. There's Yasuo. Swap him out. I can't use any of the dragons. For legendaries, we could run like a bard or something. I probably sold that Volibear a little early, but luckily we hit the Nyla, so I'm going to go ahead and itemize her. Probably Hand of Justice plus something else. Yeah, definitely those two on the Yasuo. Probably the Rage Blade. I guess Shiv is possible too. Keep in mind with Binary Airdrop, your items have to be on like way before in order to get the value, so I definitely messed up here. I pretty much lost a round with value on my on my Prismatic Augment, so that is pretty bad. I missed out on maybe two free items. Not ideal. Especially one of them is on my two-star Nyla, which is my only two-star carry right now. Luckily, we're able to... I think we finished this one off, so we're able to dodge a bullet there. Uh, I probably should have sold Nunu and Varus here, but it's not the end of the world. I lose one gold. Uh, Pantheon, very good. Unfortunately, I only have like one Pantheon item, which is the Warmogs. We got the Brahm over the Zac. I'm going to keep rolling. There is our Graves too. Okay, so we're in a decent spot now. We did use all our gold, so that's a little unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, also, I'm running Zyra right now, so Zyra is good for CCing people, so it's not the worst thing in the world to have her over Pantheon, especially if you don't have a Pantheon 2, and if you, uh, what's it called, don't have items for him. So we have neither items nor the 2-star. I should have Morelloed my Zyra, but I wanted to get binary value on my Jax. Unfortunately, again, I was too slow on dropping the item on him, so he didn't actually get the binary airdrop. Okay, are we able to... That was the tankiest Zippy I've seen in the history of Zippies. But we are able to finish that one off. This guy's got insane augments. He's got... Prismatic Ragewing, Prismatic Guild, and Guild... Holy cow, with Zaya. That's like... If that's not the best augments for Zaya, I, I don't know what is, you know? That's nuts. Okay, maybe it's not the best one, because if you're talking about every single combination in the game, it's obviously a lot different. Oh, one awkward thing is sometimes binary airdrop gives a lot of aura items. We got a Chalice and a Zeke's in this instance, and 
Obviously, that's useless because we have Exile. So you do have to be careful about getting it when you have Exile. So they should actually like remove that interaction. They should not offer you those augments if you have one or the other because there's a lot of like anti-synergy, but I guess it's nitpicking, you know? I don't know why I'm not selling Varus here because I just missed out on a free gold because of that. Uh, what do I want here? I want an item for Nyla. So that's going to be the Titan's Resolve or the Bloodthirster. Both are perfectly fine by me. All right, so we're able to get the Titans. That's pretty good. Nyla just wants like one healing item and like some survivability. But since we have binary airdrop, um, maybe the best in slot would be like Edge of Night Bloodthirster plus binary. But Hodge is a pretty decent replacement for Bloodthirster and then Titans. Well, we didn't have a choice on that, so it's good enough, right? We get some weird wacky items. Jax has RFC, that's anti-synergy. Graves got best in slot, Edge of Night. Zaya got a Jeweled Gauntlet, that's a little troll. Ny Nyla got a Infinity Edge, that's pretty nice. It's a really good augment, I got like a lot of value from it. Even though it's like, you're not going to get the best items, sometimes you get trolled. Like last round we got trolled, right? But in this case it's like, we got very good stuff. Uh, we're able to win that round, so we get like a mini streak here. And we have our top four secured just like that. Uh, again, you didn't have to win all these rounds. We could have lost like maybe two of them and we still would have been top four. Uh, so it really depends on the game. But notice here, like we're pretty much capped out right now. We can't really abuse leveling odds at level nine because we don't really play that many legendaries. Like, yeah, I could play Bard, but he doesn't get the buff. So I'm literally just running him for the CC, which is fine, right? I'm not like saying that's a bad thing because I do that for other comps. Like sometimes I'm running a guild comp and I'm running a random Soraka or I'm running a mage comp and I'm running a random bard or Soraka. But you just get outscaled by other teams later on. So it's just something you have to keep in mind. That's why it's so important to play for those top fours. Also, if we got a Hextech Gunblade here, if we ever get like a triple rift item with binary airdrop, it's just completely bonkers. But we're not so lucky in this case i'm gonna drop the hecarim in drop the zaya swap the i uh, swap the champs a little bit and then put the morello on hecarim so i make a mistake here i don't know why i put in varus over graves i probably should just have the graves yeah I, I should sell the zyra right now put those items on zyra or put the static shiv on zyra and then rage blade my my graves i don't really think i did this properly because Zyra's just so good, right? She AoE CCs. She's like my two-star bard, you know? She's not going to CC six people, but she'll CC like two or three, right? Which is good enough. It's not like the worst thing ever. Uh, man, this Deja, how come I face this guy twice in a row? That's really unlucky because he beats me, so we got smashed there. So new shop here. I want to level up to nine just to play an extra unit. So we're going to do that right now. Drop in the Zyra. We get the Yasuo. I should replace this Varus. I don't know why I'm not. Zoe, is she usable? No, she has. She doesn't get built diff. I'm not saying you have to force it. Like, maybe I should just play Soraka just because Soraka is better than this garbage that I have in the Varus. But not having the extra stats kind of does hurt. It's really like this Hecarim 2 would help a lot because he might get his cast off twice. I think in some of these fights, he actually didn't cast at all. Oh, you got a blue buff here, so that's like probably one of the best items for Hecarim. He just CCs their whole board right away and applied Morello. That's bonkers. This Nyla is abusing my Varus in the back line, but luckily I'm abusing Asama as well, so we get a nice win there. So we're in a bit of a rocks, paper, scissors right now. Actually, no, it's not rocks, paper, scissors. The, the Mirage guy is just beating everyone, and everyone else is beating the, the Som player. So we're going to finally put in Bard. He does give everyone the guild buff without removing build diff on them. Obviously, Bard doesn't benefit from that trait, but I guess the mana regen is kind of semi-relevant. I'm going to sell the Graves because he just doesn't have good items. I'll just play another CC bot in Hecarim. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I got really unlucky this game. In the past four matches, I faced the Mirage guy three times, and I've lost to him every time. You know how like 60% of the time it works every time, you know, three out of four times you face the same guy who beats you. And I just don't think that's very fair. Oh, he actually lost. Okay, so the Soam guy can beat people now. 
How do I not beat this guy? It's actually so crazy. And how come I keep facing him? I better not face him the next round either. All right, so Trap Claw could be good. Maybe like a Warmogs because I have Exiles. Or the Hecarim 2 would be nice, but then I lose binary airdrop value. Maybe it's just the Warmogs. What item do I have? I have a sword. Maybe I could... Hmm. I don't know why I picked... Oh, I know why. I picked that one because I wanted Edge of Night in case I get like a, another random carry. I think I actually wanted to triple item my graves because I got a Morello Namicon in the last round and like that's just not fair, right? Like I want three items on my primary carry, right? It doesn't matter if like I lose a little bit of value because if you look at the damage, like look, Graves barely did any, but like if he just needs the right items because yeah. You need three items on your carry. You know how when you play Dark Flights, sometimes you just triple item your main carry anyways? It's the same case with Binary Airdrop. So we faced a Mirage guy four times out of five games, even though we beat the Sone player like 2-0 in recent matches. Like, how is this remotely fair? It's not. Mort Dog, please. Matchmaking, please. <sighs> Such is life, you know. That's really ridiculous. I, I I don't I don't get it at all. We get another bard there. There's Raka. Man, maybe I should have played been playing Raka these games. I ended up selling the Zyra. I don't I don't know if that's correct. That's probably not correct. Cause I had prismatic built diff. If I had silver built diff, maybe I played the play the Raka. But if it's prismatic, I don't know. I'm finally facing the other guy, but he probably got stronger. Like, it's too late now. I could have knocked him out like three rounds ago. <sighs> okay, my Hecarim should get a good cast here. Yeah, he CC'd his whole team. That's very good. And then hmm, I can't get past the Silas three. He's too tanky. And he's been, he has 518 stacks of his thingy. I'm, I'm writing this game off as matchmaking diff. Let's not get too hung up over this. Let's head on into game number two. This is probably like the craziest game of built diff that I've ever played. Let's go on into game number two for built different. So we're just going to be playing the early game. I have the rod start right now, and we got a ton of gold to begin the game. In the new shop, we're going to get Ezreal, and uh, I guess we could have held on to the Karma. You didn't necessarily have to sell her. But I like doing the Lagoon start. Remember, you can't play Built Diff unless you get the Augments. Right now, we're just playing regular TFT. And then once we hit the Augment, we'll show you how to change it up a little bit. We got a Chain Vest, and now we have Astrals. You guys know me. I love Astrals, especially in the early game, because you don't actually have to play an Astral Comp. You just... You could just use this to generate more income. And then after that, we'll probably pick up this Ezreal pair and Senna pair. We ended up getting a tier, so really good Mage start. So High Roller, Wise Spending... Lucky Gloves. I don't really have any other gloves. Lucky Gloves is still decent, though. High Roller, not my favorite. Wise Spending, it could be taken, but I didn't really feel like playing a Wise Spending game this game because I thought I was going to go something with Astrals or Mages, and Wise Spending, it won't allow me to get Lux 3, though you might be able to take it anyways because you could push levels for something like Aurelian Soul. Instead, I re-rolled. We get Mage Crown, Built Diff, and Celestial Blessing. All three of these are great. Uh, I know I said I wanted to do mages, but I was in a call with some other people and they just wanted to watch me play Built Different instead of instead of just me doing doing mages because Built Different's more fun. I've been playing mages the entire day before and like people were getting bored of it. So we have to take out all the synergies. We got that in right in time. And whenever you play Built Diff, very important. You want to try to win streak. So slamming items is definitely something you want to do. Built Different gives health and attack speed. And because of that, you'll want to not build ability power items if you can help it because you want like attack speed, attack damage, healing, things of that nature. So we build a tank item instead. Bow also scales off of your health, so it's really good with built different. And then we're just gonna buy as many things in our shop because we just wanna hit random upgrades. So in the new shop, we get a Senna 2. That is completely bonkers huge. Now we're gonna swap out some people. Vow, not the greatest on Malphite because this item gives bonus starting mana and Malphite already starts with full mana, so it's better used on other champions. So I'm going to buy the Rel, put her in, and Kiana... Uh, it might be Set over, over Skarner because Set benefits more from the attack speed than Skarner. 
I guess Leona is better than both of them, right? Because she's just the most tanky unit. It depends whether you need more tankiness or damage. Since we have a two-star backliner in Senna, we have our damage taken care of, right? So we want to work on tanks after that. So let's say I had one-star Senna, but a two-star Leona or something like that. And let's pretend Rel didn't exist. Then maybe I'd play the set. Actually, no, I can't even play set because Senna's a Rage Wing. Never mind on that. You always have to be careful with a lot of different things with build different because it's just some way you play that like you just never really play like this ever. Uh, but we're going to pick up the Lee Sin. He's a three cost unit, so he's going to be really good. And with health, it's fine. He provides a lot of CC. We have to take out the Leona if we want to play Yone because Leona and Yone are both Mirage units. And then I'm going to clean up my bench a little here. Probably not playing the Skarner and stuff. He's just... Not that he's a bad unit, he's just not a good one because he's mainly used to generate economy early in the game. Facing this person, hmm. I also should have rotted my Senna probably. It doesn't do that much on her, but every little bonus counts because I want to build probably a Rageblade or a Morella Namicon with, uh, with that item. But she's able to finish this fight up here. We're able to generate a good win streak. So again, whenever you take built diff, win streaking is important. You're not guaranteed to win streak during stage two though, because there are a lot of insane win streak augments that can outscale you. But if they have like weaker ones or economy ones, then often you'll obviously be stronger than them. Uh, of course, if you have upgrades, you can guarantee a win streak, but we only have one of them. So it's nothing insane that we have so far. So on this carousel, we want bow if we want to continue our streak the most for a rage blade if not sword sword is good for later on because we definitely want like 10 sword items this game because there's so many different carries you could use in build different because you could run two copies of each champion so if i want to run pantheon graves and nyla which are typically the carries in this composition i could potentially have like six of them you know and then so i want like what's six times three i want 18 sword items like I know it's a lot and it's probably not going to happen, but like if I lived in a perfect world, I would want 18 items for six two star four cost carries, you know, um, that's the great thing about built diff and yeah, it's just, it just costs a lot of gold to get there and you need a lot of items. So we're facing off against radiant blessing. So this guy's got the jeweled gauntlet one. That's a lot of, holy cow. That's a lot of AP because he, he gets the shimmer scale item, which also gives more AP. But our Senna gets a lucky bounce there, and we're able to kill his Ezreal. So sometimes Senna's ultimate, it hits a 1 HP target, and then it feels kind of wasted. Other times it just hits their full health guy, and then you're like pretty happy about it. So the question here is Zaya or Senna? So Senna's an upgraded 2-star. Zaya, she's probably okay to run. If you swapped it here, like I wouldn't be that mad at you. But I want to keep my win streak going into the neutral round, so... Senna's just stronger because she's upgraded. Uh, there's not really any other logic to that, if you know what I mean. Uh, a lot of times you can play a four cost unit that is one starred if you have a lot of synergies for them. But right now we just have built diff, so we have no synergies. But if you had like, let's say you're transitioning from Ezreal 2 to Zaya, to Zaya 1. If you have something like six Rage Wing, then yeah, Zaya's probably better. But if you don't and you only have like two Swift Shot and that's the only thing you're giving her, then it's probably not worth it to swap out the Ezreal for. So that's the case here, Senna, two-starred. You like playing two-stars, you know? Also, a lot of the good tanks are Rage Wings later on, so you often don't carry Zaya in a built different comp, though it's not impossible to. Uh, the thing is, like, Rakan and Hecarim are just, like, probably the two best tanks right now because they both give so much CC. It's just, like, what else can you ask for from a tank? So we get Infinity Edge here, incredible item. I'm just going to slam it because I'm on a win streak. Built different, people don't realize it, but it's often just a top four comp. It's not really a comp that you win a lot with, but it's not impossible to at the same time. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to level up here and just play this random Seraphine and always wait till the last second to actually level up. The reason why is because you don't want other people knowing that you leveled up and then maybe they level up as well. See, I know that guy leveled up, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to for sure do it. Holy cow, he's got a zippy too. That guy, that guy might be hard to deal with. I don't know how you get a Zippy 2 this early, but <laughs> thank God I'm not facing him. So see here, like, I shouldn't have pre-leveled. And if I didn't pre-level, I could have, what do you call it? Uh, potentially not leveled up if I thought I was going to face him. So you should always 
So you should also always scout. I failed to scout here. I'm a bit lazy, but if you're actually trying super hard to win, you should be scouting when you are about to do a level six level up on three one. Uh, just because it's like you only do it because you're trying to preserve your streak. So if you're not scouting, like what are you doing with your life, you know? Um, okay, so here is when like something ridiculous happens. We get another built diff. Obviously you take it here. There's like no discussion about this. I was like freaking out whenever I got this or when I got this. Uh, so the win rate stats on built different or like the average placement stats on built different, it's around like four to 4.2 for all the different versions of built different. But if you ever get a combination of two of them, it shoots up to like average placement of two. So you average second place whenever you get this comp. So you really have to try to change your mindset. And you know how before I said built different is great for like top fouring and stuff. Now you're like, all right, if I get anything third or worse, I failed this game. That's what you should be saying to yourself whenever you get something like this. So just play with that in mind. So what does that entail? It means playing extra greedy. So doing stuff like fast nining, going for three stars, it's probably going to be something you should be trying to do. Uh, also, because like built different, it's hard to run a lot of legendary units. Legendary units, they often have their own traits built into them, such as Bard. He's a, I think he's a Bard, right? There's, I forget what the trait's called. Uh, there's Soraka, she's a star caller. And then uh, like, yeah, a bunch of the other random legendaries, all the dragons, they all have traits built in. So you actually can't use any of them. I'm actually gonna also sell my bench here to make 50 gold. And that's just because like, I, I don't need the Zaya, you know, like most built different comps, they just run Graves, Pantheon, Nyla, Carry. Uh, so I just need any combination of those. So I get the Volo Bear here. I make a mistake here. I'll give you guys this whole turn to figure out what it is, but let's look at what we want to do in the future. So we have the Zyra in right now. I have to take her out for Evoker. Um, but what would you guys put in here right now if you were to choose? Also, I think I'm going to actually level up because what's it called? Um, I want to keep my streak again, and I don't really lose that much gold over it. Normally, I say whenever you can have 30 or more gold, you should almost always level up. And same rule applies here, except since we're super win streaking, going down to 20 is okay because we get even more bonus value from it. Oh, we're facing the Zippy 2 guy. So in case you guys did not realize the mistake yet, when you are playing built different, you could play multiple copies of the same unit. So I should definitely be playing two Volibears. There's no reason for me not to be. That's just like a panic mistake because I was thinking about whether I should level up or not. That's why you should plan the level up the turn ahead. Because if you do the, the turn ahead, you could spend your next turn thinking about which units to buy and place on your board. So mistake for me because I'm not thinking ahead because I'm like talking to other people just like having fun, you know? Uh, what item do we want here? Anyone know? So for me, I would like sword. I can't get that though because someone else took it. So after that, it'd be something like glove or bow. So another thing to keep in mind, I don't know if you watched the last fight, but we actually don't need that many bows. Arguably, I could have taken the Nyla. I could have made a hand of justice with her and just like played her early on. So maybe I should have taken the Nyla there, but watch my Senna. So first I adjusted my board to put in the double Vola Bear. Vola Bear is incredibly good with built diff because he loves health and attack speed. But look at how fast Senna's attacking. Like, you don't need the Rage Blade. She's doing enough attack speed, you know? Uh, so whenever I have so much attack speed, you want stuff like attack damage, critical strike, and maybe like armor penetration. So if I get like a Last Whisper, if I get like a Death Blade, Giant Slayer, Bloodthirster for healing, that would be a lot better than the Rage Blade item. So I should reforge that later on if I get the option to. I guess you don't necessarily have to reforge it because it's still usable. I don't want like an ability power item, for example, but it's just not as effective as non-attack speed damaging stats because I already have so much attack speeds from built different that you just want to amplify your damage in other ways after that. Okay, so we're facing Dragonmancer Sejuani. This was a thing when the set came out like a while back. Uh, not but when it came out. When it came out on the beta environment. But they, they definitely nerfed it, so it's not a thing, but he's just using it as an item holder. Perfectly fine to do. Double Chalice is actually really scary. Chalice is so good for Dragonmancer comps because you only care about one unit, so getting as many aura items as possible is definitely a thing you want for that. So this is how good double build different is. You may have noticed we're on a huge win streak, and we only have one two-star unit. Like, we beat Zippy two like <laughs> i know his zippy didn't have that many items on him but 
Holy cow. This is, like, insane. Okay, finally, we have other two stars. Uh, Brahm's not that great because he's a tank. You don't really care about tanks in this comp, by the way. You just really use them for, like, support CC. But you'd rather just have, like, a lot of carries. So we are on, if you have items for them. So we are going to build a Last Whisper, most likely. I'm not going to reforge my spatula yet just in case i get a random force of nature because if i do ever get that the comp just becomes even better and we potentially could get something like earth grab bag in our nogman choice and also remember how i said before we want to play like a little greedier so i'm actually going to wait this entire stage before i reforge because i'm not playing for getting second because like second's already in the bag right I want to just get first place. It's a little different than like what we did in the previous game, for example. So scope weapons, this gives attack speed. Like we already have so much attack speed, we don't need any more. Battle mage, it <laughs> doesn't do anything. So not the best choices, but we're just going to YOLO the component grab bag from here. So we get sword, at least we get a sword and then a tier and a chain. So not not ideal. Um, again, I'm going to wait on the Reforge, but we could build a Bloodthirster for someone. So if we're itemizing Graves and Pantheon, they, they all need it. Nyla wants it as well. I'm also going to switch out my Rel for Nunu and Nar for Yone, uh, just because Nunu is a better unit. And like he has a lot of health from build difference, so he gets pretty good value because health is probably the most important stat on Nunu. Uh, yeah, again, going to wait on the Reforge. I could build another Protector's Vow. I wouldn't be mad at you if you did that. But right now I'm greeting the other damage items. So I want like a Hand of Justice, I want an Edge of Night. Those things are all really good. We finally lose. This guy has Karma 3, Kaisa 3, like holy cow. And he's got 40 gold. <laughs> that's ridiculous. But that's what it takes to beat this double built different comp. I wonder if they should like disallow this combination. Because it's a little too easy. Like technically I don't, I could probably AFK right now and get fourth. I could like literally leave my computer. It's kind of scary like that. Um, but yeah, we'll switch in Kiana for Nar. Kiana does a bit more CC. Even though Nar does like health because he's a shapeshifter, I don't actually have the shapeshifter trait, so it's not like as important, you know? This guy's Dragon Man Sir Deja. That's actually kind of cool. But I think I just wipe him. And there are some really interesting builds right now in this game. I think it's just because it's a prismatic lobby. So you definitely get some like goofier stuff there. So again, I want the sword for Edge of Night, but that's on the Zaya, so it's probably going to be taken. If not, we could build something like maybe a Redemption. Maybe we can just get a Negatron so that we can get another Bloodthirster. But a Sunfire wouldn't be bad either because we don't have any anti-heal. So yeah, we could probably just slam a Sunfire here if we really wanted to. If we were on a win streak still, let's say we did not lose that other round to the Dragonmancer player, I probably would slam the Sunfire like because that's just to preserve my streak. But since I am playing greedy now, since I don't gain that much from winning these next two rounds other than a little bit of life, I'm going to instead use my life as a resource to... Um, just have more gold when I roll down at level 9 later on. So, like, already, I'm just planning to roll at level 9 sometime during early stage 5, either 5, 1, 2, or 3. Because, again, like, we're just not... Holy cow. Like, we're destroying dragons and stuff. I know they're 1-star dragons. It's still impressive, none the least, because... I mean, <laughs> I have a lot of 1-stars still. Like, more than half my team is 1-star. And then my 2-star units, one of them is, like, a support unit, which has no items. Uh, this is a scary Swain. So this is Dragonmancer Swain with an IE for some reason. I guess I shouldn't laugh at that because it's so tanky. But wow. Who is the best Dragonmancer spatula holder? I've seen all sorts of combinations recently because they buffed the trait. But look at this Swain. Look at how wild he is. Imagine if he had like real items. Maybe like a Gargoyle Stoneplate and a Morello Namicon. Would he just be unkillable? That's crazy. Or maybe a Dragomancer Spat, Archangels, and Stoneplate or something. Or even like a Dragon Claw or something like that. So I want to skip that. I want Sword Items, so I'm just going to take that. Tons of items there. Holy cow. And we get the Graves. There's a Zaya if we want it, but I'd rather play Hecarim. So I make a mistake here. Whenever you have too many items on your bench, uh, Whenever you sell a unit, the items go into an orb because there's just no room for it. So I reforge the spatula 
without reforging the Rage Blade. So it's not the end of the world because I technically could have gotten like a ability power item, which would have been useless. Uh, and I'm like, here I was like so dizzy because I was like, wait a minute, where's my, <laughs> where are my items? And I was like, oh, there they are. So I put the IE and Last Whisper on Graves. These are perfectly fine items. Actually, I think Death Blade might be better. I could save the IE for Nyla, for example. I'm just going to drop those on him. Uh, let's probably... I don't have to roll down yet. We are pretty deep into the... Or, like, we don't have enough gold to, like, get anything meaningful. So we're just going to double up the graves. Uh, Rageblade probably goes on Nyla. I could Rageblade this graves and then put the Titan's Resolve on either Nyla on, or Pantheon. That works too, but I really do need to put something on. I, th I think Titans is fine, you know? It's not the end of the world, but this Rage Blade is a little bit dead. I should probably put it on Volibear Bear and, of course, the Sunfire Cave that we talked about earlier. We got all that settled. Um, again, I should probably look for my Volibear Bear at this point, just drop it on him because he's just an item holder. But I don't do it fast enough, so... Graves is able to wipe everyone else still. Like, look at how much health this Graves has. Like, look at the health bars. That's just how much stats built different gives. It is uh, borderline ridiculous. So we get another Hecarim, so we could run double Heck if we wanted to. And I, I guess we could level up now. We could wait another round. But like, our whole team is one star. It feels wrong not to level up and roll, but we're still winning rounds. So we also don't need this much health, you know? So it's a bit of like a tough situation, I'd say. Like, I wouldn't really fault you for rolling here or leveling up. But again, if you are playing for first place, like, we win these rounds anyways without the upgrades. That's so ridiculous. Like, Graves is attacking so quickly because he has so much attack speed. And, like, after we knew we already had a lot of attack speed, we just put healing on him and then Deathblade for AD, Last Whisper for Armor Pen. IE's pretty much the same thing as Deathblade. It's, like, attack damage plus the damage amp from the crit. And then Titans gives, like, raw stats, right? So all really good stuff on him. We got a little fortunate from the item grab bag, but I don't think it would have mattered because double built different is just way too strong. Uh, I should have played double Hecarim last round instead of double Seraphine. Seraphine doesn't really do that much. We're facing the Dragon Mancer guy again. He put Dragon Mancer spat on Kiana. He has a lot of three stars. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how this guy has this many three stars. It's actually crazy. He actually beat us. Wow. His comp does fall off later because he's using a one cost carry. But yeah, we should, two star graves should uh, demolish this. So this carousel is like the god carousel. We wanted like almost every item here. We could have used Giant Slayer, Edge of Night, Bloodthirster, Infinity Edge, Deathblade. Like I'm happy with honestly all of these. Like even the Zeeks is all right. But again, since we have so much attack speed, I don't really find that much value in the Zeke. So we could use this. Deathblade on someone else, uh, maybe we could run, like, instead of Titan's Resolve, put Deathblade on the other graves once we get him upgraded. So we have the Yasuo there. I know it gives us Dragon Mancer, but we could sell the Volibear. We don't really need him. There's the graves too. I'm going to keep these items. I think Last Whisper is pretty important. And then we also have a Nyla here, so we'll drop her in. And, okay. I'm just putting random stuff. We don't really have enough gold to roll down with. Uh, not to roll down with, to uh, play with, so it's a little trickier. There's our new graves, we just drop it in. Oh, in case you guys didn't know, built different with double trouble is absolutely bonkers as well, so if you ever get that combination, definitely definitely just use it and play for it. Um, I'm trying to find random people. There's my Nyla. Okay, drop the items on her. Again, maybe in a perfect world, I should have put Deathblade on my second graves, and then maybe put the Titan's Resolve on my Nyla. But I'm looking at this game. I don't think it really matters. We find a Pantheon here. We could run it later. Yasuo is probably doing a bit more right now. This is a Zyra 3 with like a lot of whispers. What's his three star in the middle? Silas? Okay, so he hits Silas and and Zyra 3 with the whisper emblem. But like, holy cow, the flight. Bah, the fight wasn't even close. And then from this Rift Herald, we get an Archangel Staff. I guess we just drop that on Seraphine. Maybe we could go for Seraphine 3. Like, Seraphine 3 does do stuff. It's not that it's bad. If you think about it, Seraphine doesn't really give that many synergies. She's just a good unit to support Graves with. Like, let's think about it for a moment. She 
is a lagoon, she's a mystic, and she's an evoker. So instead of being a lagoon, lagoon just gives economy, right? So that doesn't really help in terms of combat. Mystic, it does give magic resistance, but built different gives health, so we get the same durability anyways. So we get similar durability anyways. And then her other trait is Evoker, so she gets mana, but since she has so much attack speed, she gets a lot of mana as well. Holy cow, this guy's Cap Dragon. Look at his Aeoshin. Is that not the best Aeoshin you've ever seen? He's got uh, like the Shimmer Scale item, Radiant Jeweled Gauntlet, and a Spear of Shoujin. Like, that is an insane combo. It actually beats us, so it almost didn't. It almost didn't. The Soraka literally kept him alive. That is so bonkers to me. There's another Graves. Can I play three Graves? Don't talk to me or my my son ever again. Is that what the meme is? Okay, so we'll go for Graves 3. Remember how I said you need to go for something a little, a little spooky, a little wild? This is what I'm talking about. So Bard, a lot of people play Bard or Soraka in built different comps. I'd say if you have like silver built different, like the silver augment, it's much more worth it. But if you have double... Prismatic and Golden built different, it's not going to be as worth it to run them because you might as well just run like another Seraphine, for example, if I had it, or like uh, two Yasuo one stars, for, for example. It's just, yeah. You just miss out on a lot of stats if you play them. I know like you could still splash Bard, no synergies in a lot of different comps, but um, the consensus here was to not do that because... I'd rather just have like tankier guys out there. Like, look at this one star Jax. Don't ask me why I'm running him over um, like someone else, but he just has so much health. I, I I don't know. So we're facing the dragon guy again. I'm trying to kill his like bard early on. We'll see if that actually happens. I think I should have killed his Aeoshin instead. It's like a little weird. Sometimes you don't want to feed their carry any mana. Because when you take damage, look at that god bard ult, holy cow. It's a little unlucky, I'd have to say, because our graves, both of them got hit by it. Uh, but man, that's so much damage from this guy. I think we would have won if we positioned on the right side instead of the left, but we'll see. Because this guy doesn't have any sustain, he doesn't have like Hextech Gunblade, he doesn't have Celestial Blessing, so maybe we could have beaten him with... Uh by just focusing the Aeoshin. But here, I'm just gonna grab the Graves. My win con right now, it's just a Graves 3. There's really not too much else. So yeah, it's okay that we have the Shimmer Scale spat because it just, if we hit and we hit, it just doesn't matter. So I want the, hmm. I think I want the Last Whisper on him, but when I played the game, I decided not to. So I wonder why I thought that, uh, I don't know. Honestly, if I had to guess best in slot, Graves 3 items, it might be like double Bloodthirster, or maybe Bloodthirster, Hexet Gunblade, and maybe like a QSS so he doesn't get CC'd. Cause you get so much stats from just existing as a three star four cost unit that you don't like, he essentially has a death blade built into him already. Uh, but I wonder what the absolute best one is. So you generally just want them to not get CC'd, so that's why the QSS is pretty good. Bloodthirster for healing, and Hexec Gunblade maybe just to heal your other teammates as well, just because he does so much damage without any actual items, or actual damage items. Okay, let's go into the next round. I mean, we're just AFK from here, right? I mean, I'll show you guys the rest of the games, because it's like, it's just cool, right? But you could essentially just AFK right now. So we dropped the graves on the right hand side. We're gonna go kill this bard really quickly. Ah, the bard ult still went off. That's fine. Yeah, actually, like, look at how tanky this Terra is. She lived for a very long time. Is is Terra a guy or a girl? I have no clue. Uh, okay. But we beat this person on the ghost. So two people are still in. We got another Archangel Staff from the dragon. So we're just gonna drop that on Seraphine again. It, it doesn't really matter. I have this random Varus in. I should probably roll here just to play play random stuff. I should probably play this Hecarim over the Varus. I don't know why I have this Varus in. But Raka, gonna skip that for reasons I said before. I still had Jax 1. Oh, there's Yasuo 2. 
We've been level 9 for a very long time, so... It does make sense that we... Wow, this guy sold his bard too. For a bard 1. Or is this someone else? No, he definitely did sell it. I wonder why. So bard did not cast, so that makes a big difference, but... Holy cow. Just easy win there. So that's the high roll game, obviously. Like the other games, not so high roll. But we're going to go into the, the next one right here. Let's hop into the last game. I believe this was the game we hit masters in. As you guys can see here, I'm the only diamond one there. Parasel is bows, swords, and rods. Uh, what did I get here? I got a rod. Again, I've been liking AP. It's just my play style, but whatever item works for you. We end up getting a sword from the neutral rounds, and then we get a nice Ezreal pair here. So yeah, double Ezreal. He's probably the best item holder in the game. The reason why is because he holds both AP and AD items, and he's also single target. Single target's very important in the early game because there aren't many units, so you just need to kill one or two to save some health, and he's one of the better people at doing that. You shop here, we have a Talia. You could think about going something like Rengar. We could build like a Morello for Swain. We could build a... Uh, sword item for Zeke's for Rengar. Not for him exactly, but for the team comp. So you have a bunch of different options there. We could also do the potentially IEJG build. We could do, uh, yeah, we have the belt right there. So again, whenever you're doing build different, you never like aim for it, you know, but if it's there, it's there. And in this case, it is there. So we just go ahead and select that. Of course, you could take the other ones as well. I don't really think you like have to take build different, right? Uh, but I was thinking, you know what? Been playing too many mages so we might as well try something different so we get a bunch of tanks to complement the damage dealers what item would you guys build here i feel like i should build an item i think i should have built zeke's in hindsight Hexet gunblade isn't horrible either but like morello i just don't have the best holder for it i should have actually bought the senna sold the ezreal and then played senna with morello I think that would have been the best thing to do because again it's really important to win streak with built different and while it is like pretty easy to do it's by no means guaranteed because there are other insane augments that lead to big win streaks as well for example like true twos or something you just get a lot of upgrades so if i don't get upgrades of my own i'm just completely weaker than him there are a lot of other examples that just give like a ton of combat stats because like there are a ton of win streak augments in this game uh i like yone Nar's also good too, because he's like a tanky CC unit. Also, the attack speed really helps him out a bunch, because he gains some attack damage when he transforms. But Rengar's going to do a decent job here, killing the Senna, hopefully, and then finish off the rest of the team. I said hopefully, because sometimes Rengar jumps away from a target he's about to kill. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of just trolling sometimes, you know? Uh, but we're able to win this one pretty easily. That's very good. Pick the Yone. I probably should have just ran the Yone, though. So here we get an Ezreal 2. I'm sure Olaf is fine as well with built different as an item holder. You have to take out bruisers, though. That's the only thing. So you lose, like, a tank unit if you had, like, a bruiser 2-star, for example. I have a feeling my team right now actually isn't tanky enough. But this guy, he's got Ezreal with a Rage Blade. That's another thing. Like, I didn't have an item to slam here like it's really only Zeke's or Morello right Hexet Gunblade isn't really going to help me win that many fights and okay right Rengar's able to finish him off perfect but then my units split targets here if I built the Morello I think I actually would have won this round but instead <sighs> we lose it this Malphite gets that clutch shield at the end and like I don't know why his Malphite is so tanky it felt like I was dealing zero damage to him it's ridiculous, but uh, there's lose streak or win streak canceled right there. But if I built the Morello, I would have won. So I probably should have built it. Morello, you can build it on Hecarim. So it's not like it's a useless item in the built diff comp. So that's just greedy by me when I didn't need to be. So it's a little depressing. I tried to go for the glove, didn't get it. I probably should have gone the Negatron, but chain works as well. You can build like Edge of Night, which is good on Graves, Nyla. Uh, you could also build a Titan's Resolve with a bow if you get it later on. Uh, but we're just going to swap out our team a little bit. We need a bit more tanks, so I swapped in Braum for the Olaf. And then you can't play both of them because they're both scale scorn. So I'm just going to do the Yone as I talked about before too. He might be one of my favorite built diff early game people, but we don't really have items for him. 
reason why is because health helps him a lot. He's a frontline unit. If you compare him to like Ezreal, Ezreal's in the back line, so it doesn't really matter how much health he has. And I messed up building the item there. For some reason, it did not go on the Yone, the sword. It went on a unit that died. I wish that didn't happen because that's kind of BS, you know? What if I needed that to actually win the fight? I just would have lost it. We're in the next round. Uh, yeah, not too many interesting things in the shop. We can't run Kiana because we have Ezreal. They're both Tempest. Notice this game, I don't have to do any crazy leveling because we're not on a win streak. So you have to change your playstyle a little bit from the other time. This person's Jade. How did we... Nar 2. Oh man, this is what you don't want to see when you play Built Diff. At this point in the game, you're just playing for top 4. Built Diff is definitely a top 4 comp. It is by no means like a win right now comp. And I explained why before, but I'll just say it again because it's very important to stress. Because a lot of people think like, oh, if you didn't win, like you're doing something wrong. But you don't have to win every game in TFT. You just have to go fourth or above to gain rating. Uh, and like built diff is perfect for that because it's supposed to be a win streak augment. Win streaking is generally good for top four playstyles, and you're gonna just get outscaled with this build. Like it's just the nature of the game, right? You're playing a comp without any synergy, so you're not gonna get any stronger than built different. So what that means is you just simply don't scale as hard as other teams because, like you cap out at whatever your build different is. But the benefit is that you get it really early, so um, you hit like a good floor early on. We're facing an Exile Warrior. This person built no items for some reason, so I don't really know what he's doing. <laughs> like, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six components on his bench? Like, holy cow. This should never be you. If you have six item components on your bench, just like commit to some flexible item like he could build sunfire cape morello giant slayer like titans like there's a lot of flexible items he could build that don't quite commit him to uh, any specific comp but he looks like he's going warrior so it's like he could also just slam olaf items which is like a rfc for example so we have recombobulator titans and preparation all these are pretty good uh, we probably don't want titans it probably guarantees a top four though but Recombobulator with Built Different, even though our board kind of sucks, you generally only want to take Recombobulator if you have a lot of two stars, and we don't have that, right? But with Built Different, it's so good because you get more expensive units, and that's just what you want in the game, right? The only bad thing is that we got two guild units, so it's like, what the hell, Riot Games, right? Uh, thank God they gave us a Graves and a Hecarim though, so I guess I forgive them a little bit. But it's like, bro, my upgraded Twitch <sighs> is a guild unit. Like, it's completely useless, but it's fine. So what you do whenever you take Recombobulator with Built Diff is identify who you can use as a new carry. And they give you item removers, so you could definitely just use those to swap items onto whoever you want. But with Build Dip, it's just so, 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 so good. It, it makes complete sense, right? Because you get random units, they most likely won't have shared traits, and you could find some way to carry them. Uh, it didn't have to be this Graves. For example, did we get this Varus? Maybe we got the Varus from the shop or something like that. Um, but was he on our board? I don't remember. But let's say we got a Varus. We could just use like Varus carry instead. You could use like Rengar, Volibear. Like there are tons of different options. It pretty much can be anyone that's not a caster. So. Getting this Lux, kind of bad, right? Because we didn't want a Spellcaster, but it's all good. Luckily, the person we have our items on was Graves, or I should say transformed into Graves, so we could save the item removers for someone else. And these are like very good Graves items. It's like one's healing, one is survivability. We just need like a damage item as the last one for him. So I'd say like the spot we're in right now, despite not having a win streak, I don't know if you guys noticed the gold differential, but last game at this point, we were level seven with 40 gold. This game we're level six with 40 gold. So we're literally like 36 gold behind what we were the other game, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. A lot of people think like one or two gold doesn't make that much of a difference early game, but this is a prime example. We had like, I think we had like 24 gold or something like that. So it's like, 
a 15, 20 gold. I don't know the math, man. Someone do the math. We had 24 gold level seven. This game we had like 41 gold level six. Yeah, just someone calculate it. Let me know down in the comments below. And for comments in general, for these long videos, just always timestamp if you have questions. And also don't be afraid to ask questions either because we're all here trying to just get better at the game and trying to have fun as well. So uh, I can't directly answer a lot of game related questions if I don't know the context. So uh, just always leave like a timestamp if you guys have like a super specific question. For example, if you're like, oh, you should have put Jackson and I'm like, what do you mean? There's like a one hour and there's like a two hour video. And like, I don't know which situation you meant for me to put Jackson. But if you're saying like, oh, this exact time spot, uh, I like Jax over Hecarim because this, this and that reason. Why did you put Hecarim instead? Uh, that, that would make a lot of sense, right? Or make it a lot easier for me to talk about, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I like Hecarim because he CCs half the board. Jax CCs two tank units. So it's like... Uh, in this case, it's not really like that difficult of a question, but sometimes there are like very difficult questions and I'm like, yeah, I don't completely know the answer to. And I don't think a lot of people do because sometimes you need to run a computer simulation to figure out who actually wins a fight and who's actually better than the other. Because uh, there's like a lot of math involved in TFT, but the way people play, they use like estimation a lot because humans just are not powerful enough to, to do that type of calculation you know even like chess computers when chess computers first came out that was a long time ago i think like maybe the 70s was the first one i don't even know but they never were able to do much until maybe the 80s it took them like 10 years to develop or something like that and then even then they weren't that strong like i think kasparov who was the world champion at the time he beat a lot of the computers first and like they're very easy then he finally lost to deep blue he accused them of cheating whether they did or did not uh, who really knows right apparently the computer was playing non-computer like in a bunch of different games so he suspected that the deep blue team which was the name of the computer used like a very high super gm that's like a rival to him to kind of help them out and so it like took the engine move recommendations but then picked which move it was and when people play like that, it beats a lot of the computers nowadays. So if you have like human plus computer, it's like always gonna be a lot better. Um, but maybe in another like 20 years, that's not the case and computers will be even better than that. So we got unlucky, we have a spatula again. So this game, I'm just screwed. We are going to try to roll down to stabilize a bit. And yeah, I like, you know how I often say like, oh, you have to know when it's a top four and when you're trying to play for like something more. This game is definitely like, please just give me a top four and get me out. I should complete this Varus, probably put it in over the Braum. Uh, man, this game's tough. We need like another, or we need like a two-star tank or something, you know, or like an upgraded carry. Cause we do have the Varus too, which don't get me wrong, it's good, right? I'm happy I hit it, but I have no items for him. So maybe I should have put the Runons on the Varus. Yeah. I think I like that. I should have put the Runons on the Varus. It's not that Graves is bad with the Runons. It's more so just because... If you have an upgraded unit, you need to just be putting items on them. Because you're just multiplying big numbers together. I mean, we will get the Graves eventually. And then we just sell the Varus anyways. So here is a... Bit of a weird situation. First aid kit, we don't do much shielding or healing because we don't have any traits. Uh, we have like the hand of justice, but I don't think that's enough to justify the first aid kit. Salvage bin, interesting, but we already have all our items on graves, so we'd just be taking it for the item. Sunfire board, not that useful because we have a Morello, so that's an easy reroll. Knife's Edge, this is one of the best built different complementary augments. So we actually have like really good augments, but the way we didn't streak in stage two really hampered us, and the way that we didn't hit any upgrades is also troubling. And there's a guy in first place, 100 health. That's not good for us either, because we should be like higher health here, maybe like 85 or 90 health in a lot of other cases, or just be richer. So it's either we should be healthier or richer right now, and we are neither, because we are 
like level 7, 53 gold on 4-2. We did roll like a tiny bit, but we didn't roll like that much, you know? Like some people roll down to like 10 gold on 4-1, and then on 4-2 they'll have like 20 gold. But we have like 53 gold, but we didn't roll that much, you know? So it's it's a little different in those, uh, in those aspects. So new turn here, not too much else to change with our board. We're just going to settle with this for now. Oh man, using the word settle. <sighs> I guess that's just part of life sometimes, you know. I don't want to get too philosophical, but if you settle, you should do it as early as possible, right? Because then you get more of the benefit of settling. So there's that too. I'm also 29 now, so it might be too late for me. <laughs> can we kill this bramble redemption kaisa we cannot holy cow the varus was just completely outclassed by that which is funny oh yeah i meant to explain the reason why knife's oh if we get a force of nature that'd be so good the reason why knife's edge is so good with built different is because you get attack speed from built different so you just need attack damage and knife's edge gives attack damage coincidentally your carry is graves which doesn't mind being in the upfront rows. If your carry was Zaya, you obviously wouldn't frontline your Zaya. The other carries are Pantheon and Nyla, and again, those can also be placed in the front row. So, uh, yeah, it's like makes a lot of sense. But look at this game and compare it to our game before. The game before we had so many items for both our graves. We had like too many. We had, I believe, we had. S eight damage items. We had three on our graves, three on the second graves, and two on Nyla at this point. And this game we have a lot less. We do have a Tactician's Crown though, so that is good. I'm not saying like Tactician's Crown is bad. It's obviously amazing, especially since Spatula is completely dead to us otherwise. But yeah, we were just in such a better spot in the other game. Not to mention the augments were broken, but uh, we still have pretty good ones this game. It's mainly just like lack of upgrades that really hampered us and lack of gold. Because sometimes people have very low gold, but that's because they hit all their upgrades, which makes sense, right? You should, if you spend gold, you have a higher chance of getting a stronger board. But for us, we like don't have that much gold and our board isn't that strong, you know? Like, I mean, for crying out loud, we have two two stars on our team. So does this guy, but he's got like a two star dragon. Um, and he's got like two legendaries, so it's a little, <laughs> a little different, you know? He is also level eight, so he definitely did level up. I'm not saying I would want to be in this other guy's spot. He's probably going to do worse than me in this game, but I just wish I was in a better place. So we have Last Whisper. This is takeable, but you don't want too much AP. Uh, like we're really looking for like two Graves items. For our second graves like these just aren't okay so that last one this one might be takeable because i could redemption the hecarim and then qss my other graves and then get the other item later but i rolled a lot this one also takeable you could put hand of justice on graves and then reforge the tier and oh i did take take it i thought i skipped it for some reason um but yeah reforge the tier Hand of Justice of Graves, or Second Graves if you get it. And yeah, Pantheon, that's good. Drop him in. Maybe we could get a Titan's Resolve. Uh, but yeah, we're going to reforge that right now. Okay, we did get it. So if we got like a Giant Slayer, we would build it on Nyla or Graves. If we got like a, a RFC, it'd probably go on Graves or Nyla as well. If we got Rageblade, probably Graves trying to think of the other combinations i guess zz rot could have been one possibility if we got zz rot we'd probably put it on Jax. Jax is really good for that because he attracts people to him with the zz rot and then stuns them all and then i spaghetti here i put in the <laughs> put in the set which removes built different from my hecarim so that's a little unfortunate there i just didn't have anyone in my shop that i could have played which is ironic so i should have just sold everyone instead on my bench but we didn't do too badly i guess but look at this his his shiou beats me that's crazy i guess his jace is pretty big as well let's look at the damage yeah jace kind of smurfed 
All right, so we get the graves finally. <laughs> got to take out this other guy, and we'll just chill from here. We got the other graves here. We'll swap the set out, and then we could roll for, like, Pantheon 2 because we have items on him, or graves too. So whoever we hit, we're going to itemize them, and we have an item remover, so we want to play towards that. So hitting either of them would be clutch. We got a lot of Hecarims. There's Braum too, better than nothing. And then I should keep rolling here, I think. Maybe down to 10. Nyla. Nothing. Okay. Ah, tough game, tough game. We're facing Scale Scorn guy. I actually kind of like this comp a lot, but he has weird augments. He has Jeweled Lotus, which does nothing for him. Because he already has a Jeweled Gauntlet, and, like, Assassin's already crit anyways, so that's, like, a waste of an augment for him. I wonder what his other choices were, because there had to have been something else. New rounds. Uh, we are a pair off Nyla. Two off of Graves. But we're not... Oh, we actually hit. I should item remove this Pantheon. I'm a griefer. Why didn't I item remove my Pantheon? Okay, if you guys are in this situation, just do that. Because you hit two-star Nyla, and Nyla makes great use of Hand of Justice and Titan's Resolve, so there's just no reason not to switch it off. Again, whenever you two-star a unit, especially if they're a damage unit, you need items on them. If not, they just do nothing. Like, look at the damage on the right. Nyla did 1,700, but she could have done a lot more with the Titans. So here... I... These items all suck. I guess we get the Trap Claw. We could have Hexed Gunbladed. That wouldn't have been horrible, but Trap Claw is good because our Graves is in the front line a lot. So also we're all like grouped up together anyways. So it's not like a bad thing to have. Let's roll down again. I want like the second Graves or like Pantheon 2 or Hecarim 2. We have like a couple things we could get, but it's just really rough right now. Getting like kind of outscaled. This guy is running Jade Jace, which is new comp right now. Uh, I definitely like it a lot. Oh, he's also running Siphon. But we got demolished by this guy. Holy cow. I wonder who did the most damage on his team. Probably Siphon. Uh, no, Jace. Wow. So it's a round before PvE. I think it's fine to roll anyways. Like we're not going to cap out like we did last game that hard so we don't need the extra gold that badly like i was sitting on that hecarim pair for like a very long time you may have noticed i dropped Jax for graves or graves for Jax. the reason is again is because graves is one star the Jax is also one star but at least he has like a dodge ability and he sometimes cc's people whereas the graves would just run around doing nothing this is a gnar three holy cow that is pretty gnarly and he's got Dragon Mancer, Shivana. I want to play his comp. That looks kind of fun. <laughs> okay, we're at 14 life. This other person's at 6. There's the Pantheon, so hopefully we can hit. We hit it there. That's very good. He had our items. I wonder how we these fights would have gone differently had we itemized the Nyla earlier on. Because, again, like the item remover's not doing that much. Okay, so... I think I should sell... Pantheon, honestly, or item remove the Pantheon and drop everything on Graves, because he's just like the best carry unit. Please tell me I do this. Okay, I do. Nice. But yeah, I have like two dead units. Pantheon 2 and Nyla 2, just because they don't have items. I also didn't trap claw my other Graves, but it's not the end of the world, you know. I think I ran out of time. Does that cost us the game? Let's imagine if this other Graves had maybe like a bit more health, because he would have dodged the Jace hit. Uh, okay, it actually might have mattered. I might have done like a little more damage to this guy. Oh, I was facing a ghost, so I guess not. Uh, so we got fourth. Not bad. Roll down just for fun. We have nothing we're really looking for. At this point, you should just be scouting other people. Uh, but we're facing this Jace guy with the shield. There are two Jace players, I think. Or two Jade players. But yeah, this guy just destroys us. I think it's because we're all grouped up in the front because of Knife's Edge. And that really benefits his Jace and Shiyou. Shiyou, like, jumps through everyone. And then Jace obviously AoEs everyone as well. And for some reason, 
Graves can't kill this. I really thought he would actually win this fight, like the 1v2, because he's like... I mean, he's got full items, he's got Knife's Edge and Build Diff. I don't know how he doesn't do it. So there's another Graves. Unfortunately, no Graves 3 this game. It's just because we're poor. If we had like 30 more gold earlier on in the game, like maybe we could have gotten it like we did the other time. Uh, but we're not so fortunate. We get Barded here, so that's really unfortunate as well. I probably should have positioned a bit differently. I didn't scout that much, so that's my fault. Graves definitely loses this one, that's for sure. But I thought in the last fight he should have been able to 1v2. But that's the difference between 4th and 3rd sometimes. But at least we got Masters from that. And that's going to be it from the Build Different video. Hopefully you guys learned a bit more about how to use that Augment. It definitely is very good. I would avoid the Silver one though. It's a little weaker than everything else. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And I'll be coming back with more how to get to Masters videos with other comps. So definitely look out for that and subscribe if you have not already. If you are interested in more of that stuff. But apart from that, I will see you all later. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.